Have you ever died to a creeper? A baby zombie? Have you ever just wanted to pick poppies in the dead of night without being harassed by a horde of everything? Stick around for an information-packed tutorial on the epitome of sweaty Minecraft projects. A build that gives you the ability to turn off hostile mobs in your survival world. Don't forget to hit like... ...and subscribe. It makes me smile. I'm also on Twitch. So if you're a new Minecrafter, or maybe even an OG, you might be thinking, what the heck is a mob switch? Or maybe you've heard of them, but have always thought they were fake or prank videos, or just too complicated to look into. Well, I'm here to tell you that the mob switch mechanic is no joke, and it's actually not that complicated. The best part about this mechanic we'll be using is it's very unlikely to be removed from the game. This is great because if you have to decide to update your world to future versions, the most you'll have to do is tweak minor design flaws. And if that ever happens, I'll be sure to make a new video and link it in the description. There are a lot of mob switch videos out right now that are using mechanics that are likely to change in the future. So your safest bet is to put in the extra work and use a mechanic that's probably not going to change. So how exactly does turning off the mobs in your world work? Simply put, your survival world can only contain about 70 hostile mobs. These are typical mobs like creepers, skeletons, zombies, and spiders. But also include zombified piglin, shulkers, witches, wither skeletons, guardians, endermen, drowned, ghasts, and strays. Leave a comment below if you think you can name more. Basically, the game keeps track of how many of these hostile mobs you have in your world. And once you hit 70, boom, it stops spawning them in. The problem with this is, you can't just use any hostile mob, like a zombie that you see here. You need to use a hostile mob that both does not despawn when you leave the area, but still counts towards the hostile mob switch. And there's no cheating with name tags, because as soon as you name tag a hostile mob, it stops counting towards the mob. If I go more than 128 blocks away from these zombies, they will all despawn. So what we need is a mob that will count towards the mob cap and does not need to be name tagged to not despawn. This is where our friends, the non-despawning hostile mobs, go, of which there are three. The Shulker, the Wither, and the Elder Guardian. Can you guess which one we'll be using? Obviously, it's going to be the Wither. Just kidding. We're going to be using the Shulker for this mechanic. And so all we need to do is put 70 Shulkers in loaded chunks. To load the chunks, our Shulkers will be housed in. I've chosen to not reinvent the wheel and use El Mango's very simple, toggleable chunk loading design. This design includes an Ethel Hopper clock with exactly 19 of any item in it, and a dispenser full of mine cards. Technically, you only need one. Each time the clock counts, the mine card is dispensed and then sent back over from the deck. Sending an entity like a mine card through a portal provides a valid ticket for the overworld and nether sides to be loaded. If you would like to know more about this chunk loader, I would highly suggest you check out the main version video. I'll look it in the description. I've broken the tutorial for this box, which into three simple steps. The first is finding the right location, then we need to build the chunk loader, and then we'll collect the shulkers and put them in. Really quick, here are a couple of things that you should know before you start to build this. If you're on a server, the number of shulkers you will need will increase based on the number of players on the server. If you have two players and they're in totally different areas of the map, then you're going to need 140 shulkers. This number will increase by 70 for every additional player. The next thing to remember is that mobs can never spawn in this mob switch. That's because you, the player, will be loading the mob switch and therefore loading the shulkers thus not allowing any other mobs to spawn, even if you turn the chunk loader off. Finally, it's important to realize that this is an end game build, which means at the very least you will have to have found the stronghold and beaten the inner dragon. You'll also probably want an iron farm, a wood farm, a gold farm, and a slime farm to complete this build, but it is possible to gather the required resources without those farms. If you have any unanswered questions after this video, feel free to click the link in the description to join the farmer army discord. I love answering them there. So first, we need to find the correct location to build this in. To do this, just go near 00, zero and pull out a compass. And then follow the needle of the compass until it points directly at a single block. When you look at the center of this block, it should be quite obvious that the needle points towards it. Once you've found this block, pillar up to the height that you would like to build your mob switch at. I would suggest building it at build limit y equals 256, so that way it's not in the way of any future projects. Once you reach
switch build limit, pick a direction that you want to build your mob switch in. If you do have a base near your spawn chunks, make sure you build it away from your base. This way, if you want to turn it off, you'll still be able to. You want to first build out six chunks in this direction. Once you reach the border of your six chunk, put a marker and build out another six chunks. Once you're here, grab a stack of items and begin walking back towards your spawn point while throwing them. Once you reach this point, go all the way back to your center spawn point, throw an item on the ground, and set your render distance to 2. Now, after 5 minutes, this item will despawn. Now it's safe to turn back up your render distance. And head back out to where you threw the items. You'll notice that somewhere between the 6th chunk and the 12th chunk, items will start to reappear. This blue line right here indicates chunk border. And this shows you that these chunks right here are outside of the entity process processing spawn chunks. Right now, we just want to place a marker inside this chunk. Finally, you need to build four chunks out past this. And once you reach your fourth chunk, this is where we'll start our build. So now that you're here, four chunks out from your entity loading spawn chunks, you need to come to the edge of this chunk board. From here, you want to build to the center of this chunk. Then you want to replace these two blocks that straddle this center line with obsidian. Now finish the portal. Now place a row of glowstone on this side of the portal. This needs to be the outside of the portal, the one that is further from your spawn chunks. Now you need a dispenser facing up right here hopper facing into it, and another hopper facing into that. Now place any block right here, with sand on top, and then two sets of powered rails just like this. Break that powered rail, place the cactus, another block there, and one just like that. Now you need to grab a block that can be powered, and place it on top of the cactus. Place a scaffold in here, a redstone comparator like that, redstone dust on top, and a sticky piston, and a redstone block. Now grab a hopper, and place two hoppers just like this. With a set of blocks like that, redstone on top, Redstone torches here and here, and another redstone torch on top of there. Now put 19 items into this hopper. Then place a block underneath this hopper with a lever on top. This lever will allow you to turn the hopper block off. By looking at a block, you can find its coordinates. They're located right here on the F3 screen. Write these down and then divide the X and Y values by 8. If they don't come out to whole numbers, it should be alright, just round to the nearest of the room. Don't forget to light the portal before you leave, but do not go through yet. You now need to go back to your home nether portal. Real quick, I would highly suggest that if you haven't already, move your home nether portal above the bedrock ceiling. I plan to make a video on how to break bedrock in the future, but for now, I'll link a video by Raceworks in the description. Now what you need to do is navigate your way to the block that we determined earlier by dividing our portal coordinates by 8. Once you find this block, place an obsidian on top of it. Now build up another portal facing the same direction as your one of the overworld. Once you've built the portal, light it and you can go through now to see if you built it properly. You should arrive at the portal that you made in the overworld. Now, go to the spot with the longer track, face away from the portal, and back into the portal. Now walk forward out of this side and place a block. Then a piece of sand after that, with a dispenser behind, break this block. Place a hopper going into there and another hopper out of that. Now grab your powered rails, place one there, one there, one there, and 
another one here, and then break this one. Cactus right there. Place your glowstone across like that. Now you need a comparator coming out of the suspenser, going into a block. That block has a redstone torch on top, with another block like that. Redstone torch there. Block on top. Block there, and there. With a repeater just like that. On full delay. Now, whenever you place an item in this dispenser, you should see it pop out. Congratulations, you just successfully hooked up your first chunk loader. Now, go back through the portal. And fill this dispenser with minecarts. Now, grab some glass and build down three blocks. Then, proceed to build a frame that is exactly 19 by 17, just like you see here. Use a different block to mark out every other space. These will be where the shoppers go. It is essential that you get the orientation of this array correct longer side parallel to the portal. Last thing in this section, I made a mistake when I made this block go stone. It actually needs to be a solid block. Stone. Congratulations, you've now completed section 2 of this tutorial. Now let's go get some shoulders. The first thing you need to do is go to your end portal and travel to the end. From here you need to go to your section portal. And get the coordinates for this block right here. If you started this world in 1.16, the X and Z coordinates should both be zero. The only thing that will change from world to world is the Y coordinate. Write this down. Now go back to the portal and navigate your way to zero zero. Once you're here, you need to replicate the exact coordinates of that block at the end in the overworld. For me, this block is right here. In my example, the bedrock block above the end portal had coordinates 0, 63, 0. And here, as you can see, this block is the exact same coordinates in the overworld. Once you've found this block, replace it with an end rod or a glass pane. To teleport proof this end rod, what you need to do is either flood all the blocks around it or cover them with buttons or just dig them out entirely. In my example, this is made easy because this block is in the middle of an ocean and shulkers cannot teleport to water blocks. What I was just doing to test if you've done everything correctly is load a backup of your world in creative and grab a shulker spawn egg and place it against the side of this end rod. If you missed a block somewhere, Shulkers will be sure to let you know by teleporting to it. Now find the side of your end rod that is closest to your chunk loader and build out 10 top half slabs. Once you're here, remove these two slabs and then place 7 more slabs just like this. Put an end rod on top of this slab right here, then two regular rails, and finish this off with power rails. This will be your shulker pickup station. Now toss two redstone blocks here and here, and connect the powered rails up, so that way all the powered rails are active. Then using your solid block of choice, place a block behind this rail, and build out a platform for you to stand on. I would now suggest placing a double chest here, and filling it with minecarts. Once that's done, you now need to make a track going all the way from this side up to your chunk loader. This will take a bit of work, but it's required to transport the shoulders. Once you finish this minecart track, I would highly suggest that you test it yourself, just by hopping on a minecart. Once you know that your minecart track works, it's time to go back to the end. Once you're at your center end portal, place two pistons facing downwards, just like this. Now that you've done that, you need to teleport proof the area. For this, I like to use buttons because they're quite easy to craft. When the pistons are fired, the buttons will fall off, so to teleport proof the piston sides, you need to use end rods or glass panes. Now you need to place an activator rail right here, and then 10 powered rails this way. Now place a regular rail there, and 10 powered rails this way. Now you can power all of these rails. Now we need to teleport proof the entire area around this activator rail. Once you teleport proof the area, the shulkers that you bring in on minecarts will have no choice but to teleport to the only available block, which is underneath these pistons. Just like that. Now that we spawn proof the area, we need to build the holding cells for the shulkers to be housed in before they get sent to the overworld. To do this, just place two regular rails, then a powered rail, a solid block, a button, then two glass like this, and glass along the walls. This is so that you can see the shoulders that you've Then all you need is a 
lever right like this. You can chain these together by simply putting another power rail over here with a lever and then building your second container. I typically like to build eight of these containers because batches of eight seem to be the sweet spot for me in terms of transporting shoulders. But you can build however many you plan to use. For this tutorial, I'm only going to build two of them. Next, you need to locate some end cities. For this, I would suggest using the seed of your world, if you know it, and enter it into chunkbase.com or Mist. These tools can help you find end cities that are near your central island. The other option is spending a couple of hours to manually map out the end cities near your end island. Once you've planned out which end city you're going to raid first, you need to build a rail track all the way to it. Once you've finally reached your end city with your rail line, you now have the super fun task of working with shulkers. You're going to need lots of full strength portions of invisibility. You also don't want to be wearing any armor during this part of the process because each piece of armor increases the range at which the shulkers can see you at. Before you go near the shulkers, you need to build the same number of holding cells as you did near your central end point. Once you've done that, it's now time to capture the shulkers. I would suggest having a lot of slime on hand because this block is easy to break when you need to and easy to place. Don't forget to orient this rail correctly so that the incoming shulker goes into the container. To actually capture a shulker, all you need to do is pass a minecart inside it. This will pick up the shulker and transport it away. Remember to not place any blocks on top of the shulkers because this will make them teleport away. Once you have the two shulkers captured, orient the rail so that they will exit towards the correct side. Now you can send the shulkers off by pressing the button. Make sure there's no endermen in the way of the immediate track, because if there are, they will stop the shulkers. Something that I learned while I was doing this is that it's really helpful to place a furnace minecart behind the shulkers, so that that way they get pushed by it if they ever bump into an enderman. Once the first shulker arrives in the first slot, at the center end island, flip the lever to allow the second shulker to file into the second slot. Just like that. Now orient both rails so that the shulkers will exit towards the end portal, and release the first shulker. Eventually this shulker will teleport to either one of these two open spots. Once he does, it's safe to send the second shulker over. Once you have both shulkers in position, press this center button to send them to the overworld. Then you can follow them yourself. Once you're back in the overworld, go to your chunk loading setup, and go to the far corner opposite to where you have the rails. This block right here will be the position that your first shulker will be placed in. To remove the shulkers from the minecarts and put them in their final resting position, power an activator rail directly to the left of this block. Then hook up this activator rail to the rail line coming from 00. Then place a regular rail behind it. This will allow the minecart to fall off the edge. Now travel back to 00. Remove the end rod blocking them from teleporting to this block. And eventually one of them will teleport. Now grab one of the minecarts you stored away. Place it on the track, and send the shulker up. Eventually the shulker will arrive, and teleport to the right of the activator rail, placing him exactly on the block where you want him to stay. Now remove all these rails. Now encase the shulker in a 3x3 cube of glass. Place one block at the top, and you have just successfully encased your first shulker. Now all that's left to do to complete this mob switch is fill in the rest of the shulkers. It may seem like a lot of work, and it is, but the nice thing about this design is that it allows you to compartmentalize the work, meaning you don't have to do it all in one sitting. Once you encase a shulker, it is completely stable and won't try to shoot at you or teleport away. Once you finally put in your last shulker, you will have successfully completed your mob switch. To prove this works, I'll flip it off and set the time to midnight. And when I go back to my main base, you can see that there's plenty of hostile mobs. Creepers, skeletons, zombies, spiders. But as soon as we turn on this chunk loader, that will load all these shulkers that you've put here. You can see that there's absolutely no hostile mobs in this area. Thank you guys so much for watching. I plan to make more Technical Tuesday videos in the future. Hopefully I'll get better at, better at editing them though, because this one took a really long time and it's not even that good. If you ever have any problems or questions, just join the Farmer Army Discord and I'd love to answer them. I 
also love answering questions on my Twitch channel. Have a good one, and until next time, see you.